You put the items in the machine. You press the start button. Do you even know what is happening inside that hydrogen peroxide sterilizer? Hey friends, Brandon the Sterile Guy here. If you like the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you like the videos, then give a thumbs up. It is always greatly appreciated. Sterilization is a critical process in healthcare and many research settings, and hydrogen peroxide-based systems are among the most advanced technologies we use in sterile processing today. But how do they work? What makes them effective? And how do we ensure that they're even doing their job? In this video, we'll explore the history, mechanisms, safety, and testing of H2O2 gas plasma and vaporized hydrogen peroxide sterilization. Hydrogen peroxide as a sterilizing agent has been in use since the mid 20th century. Initially, its antimicrobial properties were harnessed in liquid form for disinfection. However, as the demand for low temperature sterilization methods grew, researchers discovered ways to utilize hydrogen peroxide in gas and vapor forms. Leave it up to the chemists to be mixing chemicals. In the 1980s, it was well known that an alternative to ethylene oxide was in high demand. This pushed researchers to continue searching for a compatible sterilization method that could produce the same sterile results without the damaging heat of steam or the physical dangers of EO. During this time period, hydrogen peroxide gas plasma systems were introduced, offering a fast and efficient alternative to traditional ethylene oxide sterilizers. Around the same time, vaporized hydrogen peroxide or VHP systems were also developed, making it possible to sterilize sensitive instruments and even entire rooms. Now that we know the timeline, let's jump to our next section. Let's start with gas plasma sterilization. In this process, hydrogen peroxide is converted into a low temperature plasma using radio frequency or microwave energy. The plasma generates reactive species such as free radicals that break down microbial DNA, proteins, and membranes rendering microorganisms inactive. Whoa, what? Let's break this down. Hydrogen peroxide in its raw form is H2O2, meaning two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms, which are connected by a single bond. Pure 100% hydrogen peroxide is actually a very pale blue color. Just FYI, that brown bottle of hydrogen peroxide you have in your medicine cabinet is not 100%. That is only 3% hydrogen peroxide. And the remaining 97% is usually water in some stabilizer of some kind. The reason there is a stabilizer is because hydrogen peroxide needs something to prevent it from decomposing, which is basically turning back into water and oxygen. And this mostly occurs in the presence of light, which is why it mostly comes in those dark brown bottles. Hopefully I'm teaching you some things today. Now that we better understand hydrogen peroxide, what is happening in the plasma sterilization? First, did you know that plasma is the fourth state of matter? I'm sure you've heard before, it's been referenced over and over that there's liquid, there's solid, and there's gas. Well, plasma is actually the fourth state. Plasma is pretty fascinating. It's filled with free moving charged particles. Plasma, because of the charged particles, can actually conduct its own electricity and generate magnetic fields all on its own. Some similarities in technology is like fluorescent light bulbs and plasma TVs, in a way. So first, hydrogen peroxide is pushed into the sterilizer in a vapor form. Think like steam, liquid that is currently in a gas state. Okay, so the chamber is filled with the H2O2 vapor. Now to get it to the plasma state, it requires a little help from an electromagnetic field, which is done typically with radio frequency or microwave energy sources. So the machine kicks in the radio frequency energy, which turns that vapor into plasma, 
full of free radical particles. These free radicals have unpaired electrons, which makes them highly reactive. And these highly reactive radical particles do a number on any living organism inside that machine. They disrupt cell membranes, they cause damage to nucleic acids, and they inactivate enzymes and proteins by disrupting their very structure. Basically, it completely destroys the organism's metabolic processes, causing the organism to die. It would be like removing your liver, pancreas, and thyroid all at the same time, while also turning off your body's ability to convert anything into energy. So your muscles, adipose tissue, and brain all stop functioning at the same time because they all require metabolic processes to survive. Keeping in mind, your heart is a muscle too. Hopefully that paints a picture for you. It completely decimates the organism. Now with vaporized hydrogen peroxide, it basically works the same as the plasma up until the point of radio frequency or microwaves, which don't occur in a VHP. Instead of turning that H2O2 vapor into plasma, it stays in vapor form, which kills organisms by oxidation. This process also impairs the metabolic processes of organisms, but not quite as rapidly and harshly as plasma does. VHP also causes lipid peroxidation, which basically means the cell membrane is compromised and the cell begins to leak. Basically, if you've seen horror movies, it's something like where someone gets their stomach cut open and all their guts spill out, like that. I know it's a gross analogy, but it's a good one. Now let's move to our last section. Sterilization using H2O2 gas plasma, or VHP, follows precise steps to ensure efficacy and safety. Cleaning. Instruments must be meticulously cleaned to remove debris beforehand. The vapor or plasma has to be able to come into contact with all surfaces of the instruments. If it's not clean, it cannot be sterilized. Drying. Residual moisture can interfere with the sterilization process. Both processes control humidity. Plasma sterilization keeps humidity very low, where the vaporized sterilization uses a relative humidity, meaning don't add extra water to the cycle. Loading. Instruments are loaded into the sterilizer in a way that allows even exposure to the vapor or plasma. You don't want trays squished together because you need room for the penetration. Cycle. The sterilizer runs through programmed phases. The gas plasma includes conditioning, injection, diffusion, plasma, and aeration. And the vaporized includes possible dehumidification, conditioning, sterilization, and aeration. Now safety is paramount. Though these sterilizers are considered to be very safe, Hydrogen peroxide is a powerful oxidizer, and exposure can irritate skin, eyes, and respiratory systems. During aeration, the hydrogen peroxide is decomposed, turning it back into oxygen and water, making it harmless. However, to mitigate risks of exposure and harm, sterilizers are equipped with leak detection systems, and proper ventilation is essential. Operators should always wear personal protective equipment when handling the sterilizer as required by the sterilizer IFU and be very mindful of handling items that failed or aborted in a cycle, which must be reprocessed through decontam since the sterilant never made it to the aeration stage, which means it's on the instrument still, not to mention on all the packaging as well. You must use PPE to handle those. Hydrogen peroxide-based sterilization technologies are game changers, ensuring patient and worker safety while creating much needed efficiency. Understanding how they work helps us appreciate their role in modern healthcare. Any topics or videos you wanna see, please drop those in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.